All right, everyone, we are going to get started. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country or I guess in the world. Welcome to the this edition of the Association of Fitness Studios webinar series. My name is Josh Levy. I am the founder and CEO of AFS. And today we're very excited to have with us a, a tag team effort from MyZone. Ron Sobiak is MyZone's business development manager of North America. And Grace Kerr is MyZone's sales associate. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, just so everyone knows, today's webinar is being recorded. It should run about 35 to 45 minutes and will be posted on the AFS website in just a few days. We'll also be conducting some Q&A at the end. And so the way this works is if you have a question, we ask that you send your questions to me, the host. And you can do so by using that little chat uh, text function of your join me display. It's that little green icon to the right of the phone. Just make sure you select host to ensure your questions are received and answered at the end. So a little bit about AFS. Uh, we are the most powerful solution to run your fitness business. Simply put, we provide the guidance you need to grow your business. We're a bustling community full of the most successful owners and operators in the country. In fact, all of the most highly respected and influential organizations in the fitness industry are on board with AFS to support you with new revenue opportunities and a lot of more. AFS is the association you deserve, built specifically for you. Of course, more on us can be found on our website, which is afsfitness.com. Special thank you to our sponsor of this webinar, MyZone. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that is designed to increase the lifetime value of your member. MyZone uses live in-club heart rate tracking, smartphone-based gamification, and social media mechanisms to track, incentivize, and keep your members accountable to the effort they apply. It is this digital engagement that enhances their brick-and-mortar experience, providing value in the personal training experience while also helping the member with their initial onboarding and continued engagement in exercise. And now on to our expert presenters. Ron Sobiak has been in the fitness industry for more than 13 years with experience in operations, marketing, and management of health clubs and fitness studios. He was one of the founding members of the global wearable technology brand, MyZone. Grace Kerr has her BS in exercise science from Southern Illinois University and MS in sport management from Northern Illinois University. She is also a group exercise instructor at the Midtown Athletic Club in Chicago, teaching cycling and body combat. In her free time, she enjoys trying new restaurants in the city of Chicago. So everyone on the line, you're in for a real treat. Uh, My Zone definitely knows their stuff in this area. I'm very excited to present uh, Ron and Grace. And so, guys, the floor is yours. Take it over. Thanks for the introduction, Josh. Uh, guys, thank you for taking your time out of your day to attend this webinar. Uh, we want to go over really four topics today. We want to go over the current wearable space and where it's headed. Uh, we want to go over how wearables would look in your business, the fitness center. And for that, we're going to go over our product offering. Uh, we also want to give you a few plays on how you can increase customer lifetime value using wearable technology. And then finally, we're going to end with uh, – we, we've been lucky enough, we've been doing this now for seven years, and we've been lucky enough to have some really prominent clubs in the industry do some case studies on our product, uh, A-B test. So we want to kind of share with you some of those results so you can apply them to your business and your facility. Uh, but just a quick overview of MyZone. Uh, we started the company back in 2011, and really 2015 was a banner year for us. That's when we launched the MyZone app. Uh, it was an award-winning app. We won the best wearable in 2016 off of that. Uh, we work with clubs in over 30 countries, over 4,000 facilities use our product, and then over half a million end users use these belts in the app to track their workouts. Uh, we've been featured just as recently as a couple of weeks ago in Forbes Magazine, BBC, ABC, Fox, a few prominent uh, news channels that have focused on my zone. Uh, and we really have a two-pronged approach. On a B2C level, so that's with your members and the end users who use the belt to track their workouts, we try to make exercise fun and interesting via goal setting gamification, and social engagement tools. And then on a B2B level, we're trying to enhance your customer lifetime value through member engagement. And so when we take a look at the space of wearables, I think we have to start at the history of it. And it really got started back in 2013. You can see from this graph, Fitbit, this is when they went mainstream. So this is when they went into the brick and mortar stores. Uh, this is where you could buy them from the shelves. And it really brought wearables to the mainstream. 
Uh, there was a few other companies doing it, but the bulk, of course, was Fitbit. And then you can see that it's really taken off since. So currently, if you look at where the, the blue is, that's this year. It's currently a $14 billion industry, but get this, guys, it's projected to grow to $34 billion by 2020. So this is going to just be exponentially growing. Very relevant. This is the American College of Sports Medicine's fitness trends for 2017. If you look at the very top, you see wearable technology is number one. And if we took a time machine and went back one year to 2016, you'd see the same thing. Wearable technology was the number one trend last year. So very, very relevant. Um, some statistics based around it. ACE did a study uh, with trainers, and they did a survey, and they asked questions. And these were some uh, points that I thought was very key. 72% of trainers reported that clients asked for insight in feedback on wearable devices, but only 51% feel they're prepared to answer those questions. 71% of trainers said that they would be interested in allowing clients to purchase devices, and 75% of trainers would be interested in running challenges using wearables. Now, in regards to the end user, uh, this is a survey that PwC did, and they found that 60% of users feel more control of their health when using a wearable. 57% say they believe it will extend their life by 10 years. So the wave is here. Uh, we see it's not slowing down, it's only growing. The million dollar question is how do we leverage wearables for our business model, which is the fitness industries, health clubs. And I think the first step is to understand your options. Um, I have a graph here, if you look at it, it's from less accurate to more accurate. Accuracy is so key because if something is not accurate, it becomes irrelevant, which becomes disengaging. A little secret of the wearable space is people use the devices for about three to six months on average. So they'll get a Fitbit for Christmas, they'll use it till March, they'll, they'll put it in the drawer, and they won't use it again. Um, there's some things that you can do to prevent that, um, and we're going to go over that uh, in this webinar. But starting on the left is the pedometer. This was the first wearable tech. Uh, it's very, you know, what it is is basically you're putting a device on your belt, it's tracking your steps, very inaccurate, but you see this in corporate wellness. You see it in schools. Very cheap. The price points, you can get these on Amazon for 3 to $5, and at least it gives you a baseline. So it's more of a lifestyle device getting you to walk around the office, get up off the chair, or take the stairs instead of the elevator, uh, walk to work instead of taking the bus. Good for that. Same thing with the accelerometer. This is what Fitbit made popular. This is essentially a 3D pedometer. So it goes around the wrist, and all the smartphones have it. Most wearables have it where it's just tracking your activity throughout the day. Once again, a lifestyle device, not so much for concerted exercise. If you were to do eight kettlebell swings, it would just give you credit for eight steps, which we now all know in the fitness industry it takes a lot more effort uh, to do eight kettlebell swings than eight steps. Next, we have the heart rate. Uh, this is the best way to track concerted exercise. Uh, you have two options here. The new, newest technology is the optical blood flow sensors. That's what you see in the smart watches the iPhone, Samsung, Garmin, uh, and essentially what it is is it's a green light that's reading the flow of blood through your capillaries, and from that flow of blood, it has the equation where it predicts what your heart rate is currently. Now, it's accurate to a point, so it would be accurate right now if you're sitting down watching this webinar, it would give you an accurate reading. It'd even give you an accurate reading if you went for a walk or some type of steady state exercise. Not accurate if you're doing high intensity exercise or doing a movement that's not predictable, like walking or running. The most accurate and the most relevant to our industry is the heart rate monitor that goes around the chest. This has been out, been out forever, still the most accurate. In my zone's case, we're 99.4% accurate to an EKG machine. And if you're going to be displaying this data and if you're going to be using it as a coaching tool, you need to make sure that it's very accurate. Uh, Fitbit got in a little bit of trouble last year. They actually got... Uh, uh, class action lawsuit against them for false advertising, uh, claiming the accuracy of the risk. But actually, if you actually look into it, I got this from their website, they actually don't claim it's accurate for concerted exercise. You can see what's highlighted. It says with high-intensity interval training, C90X, boxing, or other activities where your wrist is moving vigorously and non-rhythmically, the movement may prevent the sensor from finding an accurate heart rate. Similarly, with exercises such as weightlifting, rowing, or wrist muscles, where your wrist muscles may flex in such a way that the band tightens and loosens during exercise, try relaxing your wrist and staying still briefly about 10 seconds, after which you should see an accurate heart rate reading. Very, very inconvenient for people that are actually exercising and doing concerted exercise. 
So guys, that's the space. Now, where's the opportunity? Uh, we know we need to use the chest heart rate strap. The opportunity, I think there's really three main opportunities. And the goal always in our industry has been, you know, and the challenge for us is being to adhere to exercise. So we want to be able to get our members to form the habit of exercise so they stay at the club, they see results, they refer their friends. Now, I think a great story on how a habit is formed is using toothpaste. Um, toothpaste in the early 1900s, no one was brushing their teeth. Just, and what the ad agencies and the marketers were doing is they would advertise the health benefits of toothpaste. So they would say, hey, it prevents gingivitis. Uh, it can prevent cavities. There's a direct correlation between the health of your teeth and the health of your heart. And once again, no one would brush their teeth. And then one company, Pepsodent, added two ingredients to the toothpaste. One was mint oil. The second was citric acid. And that's what creates that tingly feeling that you get after you brush your teeth. And people would correlate that with a clean mouth and a, and a healthy teeth. That was the reward. So when we look at the habit loop, there's got to be a trigger that's waking up in the morning, the routine is brushing the teeth, but then what's the reward? The health benefits, that wasn't enough. They needed to feel something, have something tangible, and that was the tingly feeling. So after about a decade of being on the market, over half the country was now brushing their teeth on a daily basis. And the psychologist, years later, would point to the habit loop, and that was the difference. So I think when we look at our industry, and we run into the same thing. What do we market? We market the health benefits of exercise. But people give up because they may have a goal to lose 20 pounds, but they can't see that right away. We know it takes a long time to see results. And I think where you're going to see wearable technology disrupt the industry is by providing that reward. We're currently already doing it with MyZone where we send you an email with your results so you can actually see what your results are. We have a point system where you're able to earn points that can go towards a challenge. And it can be as simple as seeing how many steps you take or how many calories you burn. But at least people know what they accomplish and they get that reward after working out. I think that's going to become more and more prominent as we look at wearables. Next opportunity is social accountability. And social accountability is the rule that you do more when other people are watching. So, for instance, if you go for a marathon run, when you're, walk when you're running by the crowd and they're all clapping for you, you're going to push yourself a little bit harder. That same rule can be applied to fitness and wearable technology when you share your workouts on social media. Uh, people can like your workouts. They can leave comments. You're going to do a little bit more. And I think devices now that capture the data and they sync up with our social connections, you're going to see that become more and more prominent also in the industry. Last but not least is, of course, goal setting. Uh, anytime you have a goal, you've got to be able to track that goal. The challenge with us is that people's goals are always long-term. So they may come to a facility saying, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds by Christmas time. That's great. And you can break that down into, say, a weekly, all right, we want to lose one and a half pounds per week. But it's still a challenge. They don't see the results right away in the mirror. And we need to break the, that war down into a, a bunch of small battles. Wearables allow you to do that. You can make a specific goal using the data. You, of course, you can measure it with your wearable device. Um, the other, you know, you want to make it achievable realistically, realistic, and then also timely. So you can also use the wearable to set a goal, set the time, and you can see whether you're going to hit that goal or whether you're on pace to hit it. So goal setting, being able to track what you're actually doing while you're working out, having more efficient workouts, all of these different factors are huge opportunities for our facility. Now let's take a look at how a wearable technology system will look inside your facility. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to Grace. All right. Thanks, Ron. Can you hear me? Okay. Thanks, Ron. Um, I am going to, like Ron said, walk you guys through how do you use wearables within your club. Um, so how it works, and specifically how MyZone works, is your clients are going to be trapped up with their MyZone heart rate monitor. They register directly through the app. Uh, step two, they're going to perform what ex whatever exercise they're they're doing for that day. Um, so put on the put on the heart rate strap, perform the exercise, and then you're going to instantly show up on the live display in the club. So step three would be the real-time feedback indoors and outdoors. So you can see the live display for the indoor, for or rather in the facility. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see the live display that your clients could see outside of the facility utilizing the MyZone app. So you can upload throughout or wherever you're at. So uh, very convenient for your members. And then 
step four, they're going to instantly receive that gratification email. So rewarding them for that effort they just put into their workout, going to break it down for them, provided to them by your facility with your club logo on it so they can see their results directly through the app or through that email summary. Uh, Ron already touched on this. Our hurry monitor is 99.4% accurate, so I won't go into that. Um, but we do offer a couple of different options if anyone wants to wear something that is more incorporated into their clothing, so a sports bra or compression shirt for men. So this is the MyZone tile, and I'm going to break it down um, and do a little bit more detail for you. So the tile itself, when the client registers, they decide what nickname they want to show up on the top left-hand corner. Uh, top right is going to be their calories burn. Bottom left is going to be BPM. And then bottom right are those MyZone effort points, and I'll touch on those here in one second. Let's focus on the middle of the tile. So the focus of the tile is the percent of their max heart rate or how much effort they're putting into their workout, which is going to determine what zone they're hitting. And depending on what zone they hit, they're going to be earning points. Um, so if you look down at the bottom, the gray zone, the 50 to 59 percent of their max heart rate zone, they're going to be earning one MyZone effort point per minute. The 60 to 69 percent of their max heart rate zone is the blue zone. They earn two points a minute in this zone. 70 to 79 percent of their max heart rate is the green zone. They're, they'll earn three points a minute. And then the yellow and red, they're going to be earning four MyZone effort points a minute, and that's going to be from the 80 to 100 percent of their max heart rate zone. Moving along, and we did touch, off, touch on this a bit, but it was kind of small. So this is the live display within the facility, and we recommend you have this live display in any group-based areas. So whether it be your functional training room uh, where you do small group training uh, and your cycling studio. So any group-based areas are perfect to put up the MyZone live display. So that instant gratification, that, that reward that they're going to receive is going to be that email summary. And this is just, uh, you know, a breakdown of the email summary, kind of what it would look like from your facility. So as you can see, it's congratulating, it's congratulating Lauren on um, provided to them by your facility with your club logo on it. And then on the right hand side, it breaks down their workout minute by minute in the graph, uh, tells them their average effort calories and so forth. So going through the app a little bit, and a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory as you look at it, uh, especially this slide, but this is the live display that they'll see on their phone. So when they're live streaming directly to the phone outside of the facility, they're going to see that individual tile um, directly through their smartphone, and this allows them to upload anywhere. And it all goes to the same cloud account, so you as the club or their trainer at the club have access to that. The activity calendar, so I just mentioned the trainer has access to their workout. Um, this is going to show the client themselves their workouts that they've done throughout the month. They can go back previous months and see how the, this month compares to previous months, but the trainer can also go into these individual clients' activity calendars and click each individual workout and hold them accountable for maybe any cardio homework they gave them over the weekend or whatever it may be. Social platforms, so Ron touched on this a little bit. Um, so at MyZone, on our app, we provide a platform for you to utilize to connect with your members or for your members to even connect with one another to really build a community amongst the club. So left-hand side, this is what Nicole is going to see if she's connected socially with Jose and with Natalie. So she's going to be able to see their workouts on her feed. She can like or comment them directly from that feed. Custom filters, so these are these are keys for personal trainers. So personal trainers can create custom filters to where it will separate their other social connections from their clients so they can easily navigate directly to those specific clients, um, whether they're separating them by what day they come in or by if they have small groups that they have specific names for. Whatever it may be, it's just a really easy way to navigate and to send direct messages, which I'll go into next. So here is a couple screenshots of options to communicate directly through the app. So trainer to client, client to client, they can connect direct message, whether it's an individual message or if it's a group message to maybe a team training group that you want to create for all of your clients to communicate through there. Um, a little less intrusive than 
sending them a text or giving them a phone call to see maybe if they're showing up for their session later that day. Um, so that is wrapping up the app and kind of what we've done with it and how you can really utilize it to your to, to benefit your facility. I'm going to move on to gamification. So this word um, was entered into the dictionary in 2010, and it, but it really became relevant just within the past few years in our industry, in the fitness industry. And what it is is it's the use of game mechanics in a non-game environment to affect behavior. And at my zone, we really became pioneers in this in about 2011 um, to utilize within the fitness facility, fitness industry, sorry, fitness industry. Um, moving on. So I wanted to pull a few other businesses that have used gamification, and not just in the fitness industry, a lot of other businesses are utilizing gamification to their advantage. So these are some of the top 25, so it's just two companies, but this was from a list from the top 25, uh, Treehouse and Jillian Michaels' app. Um, and what is Treehouse? I'm just gonna go through it really quick. It's a virtual training academy for beginners and experienced professionals for career advancement. So most of these are students and they're in coding or in app development. And what Treehouse has done is they reward their students with giving them badges. So they reward them with badges and points as they work through the courses to show off their achievements and impress potential employers. Uh, so the more points you earn, the higher your potential salary. Um, and moving on to Jillian Michaels' app. So it's a fitness app, obviously. Um, it's for individual challenges, it's for partner challenges, group challenges, whatever the case may be, but it's to really engage these clients. And the incentive behind it is they're also earning badges to show the client's progress over time. Uh, the prizes are rewarded to them for those who are consecutively earning those badges. Um, and then the prize being an additional service on the app, whether it be nutrition or added coaching sessions on the app. And how MyZone utilizes gamification is we encourage our clubs to run challenges. So on the left-hand side, you'll see a March Madness challenge. So an example of this would be the month of March, your clients earn 1,300 maps. They're entered in to win a free month of personal training. Any 100 maps over that uh, will enter a friend to join them for a semi-private lesson. Um, you want to keep it inclusive so no one blows anyone else out of the water. Uh, so moving, more, moving forward, so staff challenge, another type of challenge would be, for example, you would just do who can earn the most maps for the first month that you brought MyZone into your facility. Um, and maybe the bottom half of the leaderboard buys the top half coffee. Um, so keeping, really getting them that hands-on experience for your launch of MyZone in your facility. Moving forward, so another way that we use gamification is we took the World Health Organization guidelines for exercise, which you can see bottom left is 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity per week. And we've turned these into MEPs. So what that turns over to is 1,300 MEPs per month. And we use these to reward members for status ranking. So if your members are jumping this hurdle consecutively each month, we're going to reward them from one month to iron. And then if they hit it for three months consecutively to bronze and so forth. All right. And I'm going to turn it over to Ron to speak to you guys a little bit about how you can actually use wearables to make money within the facility. Thanks, Grace. All right, so let's talk about ROI and customer lifetime value. Uh, really, this is the business that we're in, uh, in the health club industry. We spend money to acquire members, and then we try to keep them as long as possible, and we try to get them, in, you know, obviously into secondary spend, buying waters, personal training, higher-yielding memberships. So when you look at it, the red graph is what you spend to acquire your customers. The green lines are how long you keep them, and then you have a little bit of variance in there for secondary spend. When you add up all the green lines, subtract it, the red line, you get customer lifetime value. And at MyZone, we've created a play around customer lifetime value and a few different plays that you can use within your facilities to leverage wearables. So one, we have a unique selling point. So a lot of clubs will get our product in as a way to differentiate themselves from competitors in the same market. Wearables are still relatively new. 
they're getting more and more popular, but you can get first mover's advantage if you're the first one to use it in your market. And then once you get the member, you got to onboard them. Once again, we have a player on that. I'm going to share that in a little bit. Uh, also, you want to get your penetration in small group training and personal training. You want to get that as high as possible. We have a player on that. And, of course, you want to keep the members as long as possible. You also can make a little bit of money on retail margin, so buying the device and then putting a little bit of margin and selling it to your members. And then a byproduct of wearables is you now have business intelligence. You have access to the data where you can make decisions on your business using that data. So when we look at the three different plays, we've broken up the gym membership into three distinct populations. One, you have your new members and how you onboard them. Two, you have your paid programming. That would be one-on-one -on -one training and small group training. And then you have your general membership. General membership is the members that just check in. They do their own thing. They leave. They don't have too much interactions with the staff. In regards to new members onboarding and how you onboard a member and how we can form that habit loop right when a member joins, we, we recommend that you bake the wearable MyZone, in this case, into a membership offering. So you'd have the MyZone membership. Uh, you'd bake the price into the enrollment fee or just into the monthly cost. And you do something called the puppy dog close. A lot of people need to feel the product in order to uh, see the value in it. And you need that downside protection. So we always do a 30-day money-back guarantee on the product. We recommend that our clubs do that. And then there's also a upside reward. So you've got to do a game with them using the point system. And typically it's something if you earn 1,300 nets, like Grace talked about, in your first 30 days, you get some type of prize. A lot of clubs will do $100 worth of paid programming that they can use towards small group training or one-on-one -on -one personal training. And the reason I like this play is, one, you're going to have a better onboarded member, but, two, you didn't sell them personal training at the point of sale. So this gives you another opportunity when they cash in those $100 to sell them small group training or personal training. So you can't force anyone to buy personal training, but you can increase the propensity for your members to buy it. Here's just a, a quick little example of the advertisements that we give to our club so they can do the challenge on an individual basis, and you can do the start date, the end date, and what the MEP target is. The Newtown Athletic Club actually did an A-B test on this, and they, and they would give a belt to a member, and then on the next time they wouldn't give the belt to the member, so it is an A-B test, a true A-B test. And what they found was that people that were integrated with MyZone at the point of sale visited the club two extra times per month. And the importance of this is when you look at the Million Man Strong report that Ursa did, Paul Bedford, I believe, did a study. He found that people that visited the club twice per week as opposed to once per week would stay an extra seven months longer. Now, if you visited the club two and a half times per week versus once per week, 19 months longer. And then if you were visiting the club over three times per week, you stayed an extra 28 months. So that's the key to retention is you've got to get the member into the club uh, using the facility. You've got to create that habit loop for them. Now, population number two, enhanced paid programming with value add. This is your small group training and your one-on-one -on -one personal training. The play here is to bake the wearable into the programming. So if they sign up for small group training, they automatically get the, the wearable. Or if they sign up for one-on-one, -on -one, same thing. Now, what does it do? One, it's a value add. This is your first class membership. So, for instance, when you buy a first class flight on an airplane, you get extra leg room. You get to enter the plane first. You get free wine. Same thing with the health club membership. So if they sign up for your premium membership, it comes with a wearable. It's 2017. But it also validates small group training. Small group training is about getting your heart rate up into the higher zones. My zone shows you whether you actually do that or not to get the benefits of EPOC. And then, of course, people will also sign up for team training because they want to be working out with others. Uh, they don't want to do it by themselves. So this just enhances that feeling of having a digital community. So everyone is up on the board. Everyone can see their results. And you can create a team goal. So the team goal may be to earn so many points for that session. Everyone's fighting for the same goal. For one-on-one -on -one personal training, once again, bake it in. If you buy three personal training sessions, you automatically get the wearable. And the great thing for the trainer is now they have an accountability tool. If, say, you meet with your client once per week, you can assign homework. I want you to do two sessions of cardio. Your first session, I want you to stay in the blue zone. This is going to be the most efficient to burn fat. 
and do it for 30 minutes. The next session, I want you to get your heart rate up into the yellow zone, let it drop to the blue zone, repeat that 10 times. That's something called interval training. And the great thing about it is the trainer has access to all the data. They can see whether their clients have actually done it. They can like the workout. They can leave comments. Or let's say they didn't do it. The trainer can reach out. We have the MZ chat function Grace mentioned. They can reach out right through our software, right through the app, and say, hey, where are you at? Any, any problems with getting the cardio in this week? Anything I need to know? So that is how you can leverage it for one-on-one -on -one personal training. The last population is the general membership population. I think we all agree here the play is retention. We want to keep those members as long as possible. And the trick is, is what Grace went into is gamification, doing challenges with the membership base. So typically what clubs will do is they'll do a seasonal challenge. They'll keep it about four to six weeks. Six weeks. Keep it inclusive where everyone can win a prize. So everyone, if they earn 2,000 miles on effort points, can win a free month of, of uh, small group training. And then to go for the people that go above and beyond, you use lottery mechanics. Each additional 500 points you earn, you get a ticket into a raffle for a gift certificate for two at a local restaurant. We will also do uh, we do challenges. This is just an example of a challenge that we did in February. We raffled off $5,000, so using lottery mechanics. And we see participation shoot through the roof. The Atlantic Club did a case study on gamification. They found that people that were in a challenge, their workouts went from once per week, four times per month, all the way up to 11 times per month. So very, very, uh, very effective uh, game mechanics. Okay, we have some more case studies that we've done that we've received from other clubs. I'm going to turn it over to Grace. She's going to go through those numbers with you. Awesome. Thanks, John. So I'm going to roll through some just some more case studies. So the first one being from Midtown Athletic Club. Shout out Midtown. I teach cycling there. Josh mentioned that at the beginning, um, the one in Chicago anyway. Uh, but this is a quick study we did on non-users versus MyZone users, and we saw the visits increase by 33%. Another quick study, Village, the hotel club, is a club chain in, UK, in the UK. Um, so I'm going to roll through three of these. So the top one, average membership and links per month went from seven to nine, so non-MyZone users versus MyZone users. Middle one, non-dues revenue. So this is that secondary spend. This is huge. It went from six to 19 pounds, so almost tripled in revenue. Uh, and then the bottom one, 53 pounds to 72, and this is the average member revenue revenue per, per month, which is a 26% increase. So I know we spoke a lot about the, the app and the social accountability part um, that comes along with MyZone, uh, and we did a few studies on this. So we found out that the tipping point was four. So connections, we're going to start with connections. So if the client has four or more connections, they're 41% more uh, more active. If they have are receiving four or more likes, they're 84% more active. Likes given, so they're liking other people's workouts. Four or more, 101% more active. Comments received on their workouts, four, uh, four or more, again, 132% more active. And then comments given, 140% more active if they receive four or more comments, or they're giving four or more comments. Um, so yeah, so let's let's move on. So NPS, what is NPS and who uses it? So some big companies use NPS, and this is a customer satisfaction survey number. Uh, so as you can see, the most profitable tech company uses that Apple, leading e-commerce website, Amazon, and the most popular online streaming service, Netflix. They all use NPS to rate their customer satisfaction. And how do we how do we calculate this? So net promoter score is calculated by percent promoters minus detractors. So if someone at your facility were to rank you anywhere from a zero to a six, these are people that are the detractors. So they're not gonna recommend your business to a friend or colleague. They rank you a seven to eight. They're not necessarily going to say anything negative about your business, but they're probably not going to recommend your business either. Uh, your promoters are the ones that rank, rank you that nine or 10, and these are the people that are going to recommend your business to their friends or their colleagues. 
So we were lucky enough to do a net promoter score with Medallia. And Medallia is a software uh, that builds loyal customer relationships, and uh, they specifically in the fitness industry. So we did this study with them, and we found an 11, per, 11 point, sorry, 11 point increase in NPS from non myzone users to myzone users, which is a huge increase. And then just a few more on this. We found that it was the, likely, the likelihood to recommend, likelihood to continue, and fitness results all increased um, from non myzone users to myzone users. So last study, last one I'll, I'll put you guys through. <laughs> So the non myzone users versus myzone users, obviously they visit the club more. We've went through that a million times. Um, but the one on the right is the really cool one, and I, I love this one myself. I, I say it all the time. Um, but we did a study with users, if, and we asked them, what if you forgot your myzone belt? What, are you, what would you do? And 30% were okay with it. They didn't care. They, they would work out no problem. It didn't affect them. 50% said it would affect their workout. So they're actually going to be less motivated when they're working out in a facility if they forgot their MyZone belt. So it's definitely on their mind. And then 20% would just completely abandon their workout, um, wouldn't even go to the gym. And I know from my personal experience in my clients in my cycling class, that's exactly how I feel. I've turned around and went back home and to get my belt before um, because that's exactly how I feel, and I know they feel that way as well. Uh, so I'm going to flip it back over to Ron to say some thank yous, and here he is. Yeah, it's interesting, that one, where people – I run into that a lot, where if someone forgets their belt, they don't even work out. And uh, what, why is that? Because there's no reward. Uh, it goes back to the old habit loop. But, guys, thank you so much for uh, attending this webinar. We hope that you learned a little bit about the wearable space. Uh, we hope you learned how wearables could look inside your facility and help your business. Uh, we gave you three quick plays that you could use around wearables to increase customer lifetime value. And then lastly, we shared with you some of the effects that our clubs are having with MyZone and some of the benefits that they're seeing with it.